Okay, so how's everybody doing? So, um, have you ever had a painting crisis? <laughs> um, let me try to explain. Um, so, you know, I think this will probably resonate with people that actually weather and paint, you know, that, that do it on a fairly consistent level or sporadically, like they just get into a you know, kind of a zone for a while, painting and weathering, right? And I've talked about it in the past, and there's so many good channels out there and, and um, blogs, you know, whatever, articles on, on weathering. So there's no one way. There's like 101 ways to approach it, really. Um, I think it usually boils down to, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, right? Like, um, I just want to share you a couple of things from my own experience and some of the painting crisis, you know, that I have now and again, because I'm human like anybody else. And weathering and painting cars is is a bit of an art form, which means that if you stray from the science of it like this, like let's just say you have f a five step program, right? Like one, two, three, four, five, and you write it down and you try to apply it to every car that you paint. You won't always get the same result because as soon as you introduce paint, and and medium like water solids etc things can go wrong right okay <laughs> and i don't like to do the same thing over and over again i'm always trying new things because i want to keep expanding you know the experience and the skill set uh, to become a better painter and it's a journey for everybody and a lot of times it depends on how much time you specifically spend on a particular part of the hobby that you know, will will uh, show and give you greater confidence. The more practice that you that you put into a particular subject, the better you get at it. It's just <laughs> it's just the common rule, right? It's a human thing that I think that applies to anything, like any practice. The more you practice, the better you get at it. The more confidence you get, and the more confidence that you get the more complicated things you'll try or the more advanced you'll become. So I just want to say off the top here that I think tank cars are the most difficult to paint or weather. And box cars are probably about the easiest. And I'll explain to you why. So when you paint a box car, right, like you're usually dealing with flat surfaces. So there's sort of one plane of light, right? Okay. You know what I mean? So you, you know, so you're dealing with a surface where it's it always has the same light hitting it because it's flat okay so like i would have to say that this car i haven't been painting cars much the last few years because i'm just because i'm building the layout i just don't have time but i have to say that this car here and this car here are my two favorites and i'll explain to you why as well like see that like the way the light reflects off that how i achieved that i do not know <laughs> I mean, I sort of know, but I do write things down. But when I write them down, um, by the time I go to look for them, you know, the next you know, months go by, you're working on something else. I can't find the notes. So I just experiment again, right? Now, these two cars, I flat coated. But sometimes flat coat can go south on you, right? And I'll show you an example. Like, Here's a tank car. Like this is an Atlas car. Really excellent cars. Uh, this was a production that they put out. I don't know how old this car is now. It could be going on 10 years maybe by Atlas. You know, the uh, master line or whatever. And this is about as good as it gets, I think, for Atlas. Like they are beautiful cars, right? Uh, they're not right up to Atherin Genesis, which I also have a soft spot for in a collection of that I'm kind of reserved about painting right now because I need to change my thought process when I go from flat surfaces, like in this case, box cars to tank cars. And why is that? Because look at the cylindrical, like look how the light, like see how the light plane, how, how it's narrow, right? As I turn the car, like see that? So that's what makes these cars difficult to paint and weather, opposed to a car like this where the whole surface is like, you know, reflects light, right? So when you're painting a cylinder, it changes everything. It's a whole different approach. Now I'm gonna show you these two cars here and I'll show you, um, you know, the, <laughs> the crisis, I guess. But so I'll close with this bad boy. I want to show you this car. So this is an Atlas as well. It's 
it was called a master line, but it's not the same quality as this. I've talked about this in the past before, but this is an older car. And when I painted this car, so I'll tell you right now, I didn't flat coat this car. So like it has a beautiful flat finish anyway. Like when I spray Tamiya's and I use Vallejo's too, like a lot of times I don't want to flat coat a car because what will happen is, is all this will disappear. This is oxidization, you know, what, you know, when I apply, I mean, I've been doing the IPA thing for decades now, and I learned long ago that when you introduce IPA into wet acrylic paint, it can do funny things. And in most cases, it turns out pretty good on a weathered car or any rusty, you know, corrosive surface. Now, if I was to take flat coat like I did with these and, and spray this, it would wreck that. It would it, it would make it disappear, and I'll show you how it did on this car. But this car, I didn't really think it through that much, but it turned out pretty good. And yet it's not the best quality car, but, the, but I just love the way it turned out. It's a slurry car, right? So, you know, it would have corrosion like this. And notice how I painted the, I don't know why I did, but... Um, I painted the little airlines blue like they were replaced. You know, it's an older car. It's still pressed into service for grungy work. Um, I think I changed the wheel sets so they're semi-scale, you know, which made it look nice as well. And um, I should probably update the placards, like the Dangerous Goods placards on it. But this was a car that I didn't think that much about, and it was mostly just done with a traditional brush. I didn't really use an airbrush on this, except for the bottom when I dusted it down a little bit. But there was a car that I didn't think that much about. I had no paint crisis. I didn't flat coat it, and I love it, right? Which explains why you see it a lot. I just love the car. Now, here's a car. This, this began like this. Here's a car that I've been having a crisis with. So this car was a bit of a fail, uh, when I first started to paint it, um, it just started doing weird stuff. It just wouldn't cooperate. Do you ever get that? When no matter what you do, you try to save the car and it just, nothing goes right. So uh, I dusted it down with Tamiya, the airbrush, I think with a super light gray. And then I started putting, you know, Vallejo washes on it. And I just didn't like it. And then last night I, I reapproached it. I started taking isopropyl alcohol because I had these funny kind of little glossy spots on the side here that really bugged me. And uh, so I started taking isopropyl alcohol and I just started wiping it off and cutting through those original acrylic layers and just working it over for about an hour. And then I added some more rust, like uh, Vallejo rust, and then I poured on some IPA and then it sort of oxidized. And I worked it over, worked it over. You know how you get into a zone? Like, you know, I mean, I couldn't film it because I was just in the in the zone, right? And I didn't want to be distracted. And it actually turned out really nice last night. I thought, oh, man, I think I saved the car. It looks awesome, right? So this morning I get up and what do I do? I look at the car, right? And I pull out my airbrush. I dust down the bottom a bit because it was a little bit of paint. You know, when it drips down, it kind of builds up. I sort of tone that down. Gave it a dusting over and, it's, and it looked totally awesome. It really did. But then, then in closing, what I did was is I took a flat coat acrylic and I sprayed it down. And it just killed the whole effect. It, like it wrecked it for, you know, for me, right? Like, yeah, I know cars look like that. But it even brought back these funny little glossy anomalies on the side, which I don't know how those occurred. I really don't. But you know how it is? So I'm in a bit of a painting crisis with this car. I'm going to press through, obviously, but man, that bugs me. So that is why I don't always flat coat cars. And if you use pan pastels, it'll wreck the effect. And if you get certain oxidizing from IPA and you flat coat, kiss it goodbye, right? Like, So there's a point where you just got to say, okay, I'm going to leave it and I'm going to go with it. Or you can press on, but you never know. You might end up with a painting crisis. It's overcomable on the next one, but sometimes the simple approach is the best approach in my experience. And furthermore, I think with this one, I'm going to leave it clean and I might just flat coat it, but no weathering. Just do the trucks and then see how that goes. Because I think a car like this with just weathered trucks can look pretty good as well. Cheers. Cheers.